Hi, so you've inherited a house and you're trying to decide, should you sell it? Should you keep it as a rental? Or should you move into it? So first off, I'm sorry, because if you've inherited a house, that means someone had to pass away, whether it's your parents, another family member, or even possibly a good friend. I'm sure you're overwhelmed, you're grieving. There might be a lot of other aspects of the estate that you have to settle. But today, I'm hoping I can help a little bit with whether you should sell or keep the house that you've inherited. So today I'm gonna to give you four steps to take uh, before making such a big decision. That's what we're talking about today. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Annie Baker. I'm a realtor here in beautiful Silicon Valley in Northern California. I specialize in helping people sell a house in trust and in probate. Typically that means someone's inherited a property. So I know when you get to the point of deciding it's time to sell, there are questions and steps you've had to take before getting there. And sometimes you don't know where to begin. So today I'm hoping to give you a little bit of help and give you four steps to take before making that decision. Number one, find out the value of the house. And please don't go to Zillow or Trulia. I have two sad stories of clients in the past few months, one in Los Altos Hills. Their parents had passed, they went to Zillow and saw the house was worth $5 million. The brother and sister are all excited. They come to me and I do my reports and research and unfortunately the house is really only worth two and a half million dollars. Two and a half million dollars is a lot of money, but not when you thought that was only half of the value. Another family in Milpitas thought the value was 1.1, according to Zillow, came to me and basically the house was $800,000. Again, still a lot of money, but not when your expectation going into it was for a lot more. So don't let Zillow do that to you. I have a link here on my website. Go to that. I will do the research and get you a professional report. No charge, free. I want this to be your first step in getting some of the questions answered. So whether it's me that helps you or you have another friend that's a realtor, get a professional value of the house. Number two, go to a CPA. A CPA will really be able to help with what the tax consequences are. A lot of people think go to your attorney first. You may have already done that, but attorneys can advise on tax issues. So let's say your income is at X amount of level and you decide to keep the house and have it be an income producing asset for you, that's more income that you're gonna get taxed on. Does that make sense? Does it make sense to sell? And are there any tax implications on any profit in the house? Um, does it make sense to sell your current house and sell the other house and go buy one property or go buy multiple properties? There are a lot of different scenarios, but you want to understand your tax consequences. So have a CPA walk through numerous scenarios with you so you really understand what your bottom line will be for different situations. Number three, get that professional appraisal done. Get an appraiser that can go out and give you the actual value at the time of death. Your attorney will advise you to do this too if you're working with the attorney, but if you're not, make sure you do this step because it will be required for tax purposes. Let's say your parents both died. Your dad passed away 10 years ago, your mom's been living in the house and she just passed away you know, three months ago. You're gonna need a professional value of that house from an appraiser at the time of death of your father and your mother so that any tax implications will be uh, official. So depending on when your dad died versus your mom, your mom's tax basis will be reset based on the value from when your dad passed away, not from when they purchased the house. And then now for when, if you sell the house, what was the value when the most recent person passed away in the house? You have to have a professional appraisal done. They're typically around $600. Try and use someone that is, uh, or that specializes in time of death appraisals versus appraisers that just work for banks when people are buying a house for the loan. And step number four is take a little time before you make this decision. I have had people tell me they wish they had met me because they had some realtor pressuring them. Oh my gosh, yeah, sell the house. Their attorney was like, yeah, sell the house. You know, there's too much deferred maintenance. You're gonna have so much work to do and upkeep. It's just easier to sell the house. 
and then they kick themselves. Gosh, if I had only thought about it, I would have kept it as a rental or I would have thought about possibly moving in the house. Don't just make a quick knee jerk reaction to sell the house. I tell people once you do some investigating, take at least two weeks, just sit on it, think things through. Don't make a knee jerk reaction. So there you go, four steps that I really think will help you make an informed decision whether you should sell a house or keep it as a rental or possibly move in. So if there's anything I can do to help you during this process, gosh, I know it's gotta be overwhelming. Uh, I haven't even talked about emptying the house or all the other steps involved, but let me know if there's anything I can do to help you during this time. Again, my name's Annie Baker. I'm with Next Chapter Real Estate here in Silicon Valley. All my contact info is below. Please let me be a resource for you um, and hang in there through this process. Until next time, have a great one. Thank you.